Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, a platform where you can design beautiful websites and host your online store. So I recently switched from the a7 III to the a7 IV, and a lot of you guys have been asking me, is it worth the upgrade? And one of the questions I've been asked the most is, is there an improvement in noise performance? And the short answer to that question is no. <laughs> you get a little bit of extra detail thanks to going from 24 to 33 megapixels, but the noise performance is pretty much the same. And in today's video, I want to talk about why new cameras are just not improving noise performance anymore and why the camera is not even the problem. The light that you're capturing is noisy. For those of you who are new here, my name is Alan Wallace and I'm a landscape astrophotographer. And this video is going to be quite specifically about landscape astrophotography, but all of the principles apply to low light photography in general. So stick around if you're not an astrophotographer because you'll probably learn something. Now, before we get into the real value of today's video, we need a bit of background knowledge on image noise, that grainy texture and discoloration that you find in the shadow areas of your images. And the first thing you need to know is that there are two main types of noise. The first is read noise, which is produced by the camera itself. So inefficiencies in the camera electronics, Things like thermal noise when the camera gets hot, uh, you know, especially during long exposures. And I'm not going to go into detail about all the sources of read noise, but all you need to know is that read noise is induced by the camera itself. And manufacturers haven't really made great improvements in the amount of read noise the cameras produce, especially in the last six to seven, maybe eight years. The second type of noise is photon noise, and the light that illuminates this world is actually noisy. I know that sounds crazy, but hear me out. The flow of light is done in discrete packets that we call photons. And the flow of light is not constant. It has an inherent random nature. And so a good analogy is to think of the flow of light as rainfall and the little raindrops as photons and the pixels on your sensor as buckets on the ground collecting that water. So we might know that the average rainfall is 10 millimeters per hour. But if we have multiple buckets on the floor, they're not all going to fill up exactly 10 millimeters in an hour. One might be 10, one might be 8 millimeters, one might be 12 millimeters. And that variation is what we see with the light and pixels. And that variation causes that grainy texture. Smooth surfaces are not smooth because of all the pixels have slightly different readings because of the random nature of the flow of light. And so this leads to something really interesting in that if you had a camera that was perfect, it was 100% efficient, it didn't add any noise to the image, your astro images would still be noisy because the light you're capturing is noisy. The amount of noise in an image doesn't really tell us how noisy the image. We actually have to know how much noise there is compared to signal. And when I say signal, I mean light that we've collected from the scene. So we actually need a metric called the signal to noise ratio. So basically how much noise we have compared to how much light we've collected from the scene. So let's say, for example, it's a bright sunny day and we've collected lots of light from the scene because there's an abundance of light. There's a little bit of noise in the image, but we have so much signal compared to noise that you can't really see the noise. But then let's say we go to a low light area and we're only able to collect a small amount of light. We still have that little bit of noise, but now the amount of noise compared to the amount of signal we have is a higher percentage. So when the signal to noise ratio is high, when we have a lot of light, you can't really see the noise in the image. But when the signal to noise ratio is low, that means there's a lot of noise compared to signal and your images will look uh, really, really noisy. Now, if you want to read about read noise and photon noise and ISO and ISO invariance in much greater detail, you should check out my book, Photographing the Night Sky. It's the encyclopedic guide to landscape astrophotography. And I went into crazy detail from beginner all the way up to advanced. And you can buy that from my website, which is hosted by the sponsors of today's video, Squarespace. Squarespace is the place to host your website or online store. And as a happy customer for the past six or seven years, I can very comfortably recommend them. I would not be a full-time professional photographer if I didn't have my website. It's a place for me to host my images in galleries so I can attract potential clients and customers. And it's also a place where you can sell your products. So I use it to sell my book, Photographing the Night Sky, and also the 2023 What's in the Night Sky calendar. 
all the payment and everything is handled automatically. Everything is seamless. And the payment plan I'm on with Squarespace, they don't even take a cut of the sale, which is amazing. If you'd like to give Squarespace a try, head on over to squarespace.com forward slash Allen. Start with one of their award-winning templates, customize it to your heart's content. And when you're happy with your website and you want it to go live, use the code Allen at the checkout for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain name with Squarespace. All right, so a quick recap. There are two main forms of noise. There's read noise, which is noise induced by the camera, and then photon noise, which is a result of the random flow of light. And as I mentioned earlier, there hasn't been much of an improvement in the amount of read noise produced by cameras in the past six or seven years. The last significant step we saw was the introduction of backside illuminated sensors, which were invented like 10 years ago, but they became popular in digital cameras like six or seven years ago. And so if you take two cameras from the past six or seven years that have the same sensor size and roughly the same amount of pixels, you won't see much difference in the noise performance. Camera manufacturers have really hit a bit of a plateau in improving the low light performance of the cameras and the sensors. And so I've seen this with the a7 III and the a7 IV. So if you look at this graph of input referred read noise versus ISO setting, that you can see that the a7 III and the a7 IV produce pretty much the same amount of read noise, especially when comparing the higher ISO settings. And I've noticed this with the images, they just look practically the same in terms of noise performance. And what most people don't realize is that most of the noise in your astro images is actually a result of not collecting much light and that light itself being noisy. So if you want cleaner images with less noise, you have to collect more light. And before we talk about that, there's a good way to quantify this mathematically so you can kind of understand it a bit more. All right, so the amount of photon noise inside the light signal you collect is actually equal to the square root of the amount of signal that you collect. But we don't want to know how much noise is in the image. We want to know how much noise there is compared to signal, the signal to noise ratio. And that is basically signal divided by noise. And we now know that noise equals the square root of signal, so we can replace that noise on the bottom with signal over the square root of the signal. So if you're pretty good at maths, you can already see that as the signal increases, the signal to noise ratio is getting bigger because the number on the bottom is going to increase, but it'll increase at a slower rate than the number on top. So if we do a couple of examples in a bright daily environment, let's say we collected 4096 photons and then we would divide that by the square root of 4096 that's equal to 64 and then the signal to noise ratio is 64 which is a high number we have a lot of signal compared to noise the signal to noise ratio is good and it means that you won't see the noise compared to the signal because we have a lot more signal but let's say in a dimly lit environment we only collect 16 photons and we divide that by the square root of 16 which is 16 over 4 we end up with a low number for the signal to noise ratio and so there's a lot more noise now compared to the signal and the noise will be a lot more visible in your images and so you can see that as the number on top gets bigger the more signal that we collect the number on the bottom is going to get bigger as well but it's only getting bigger by the square root and so the more signal you collect the better the signal to noise ratio is going to be. So the best way to have less noise in your images is to collect more light. And there's two ways to do this in Astro. One is to open your aperture, but you might already be using your maximum aperture like f2.8, or even if your lens opens up to f1.4, you might not want to open any wider because you get strong vignetting and much worse aberrations, particularly on the stars in the corner of the frame where you see things like coma and astigmatism. So there's a limit to how wide you can open your aperture. So the other way to collect more light is to extend your shutter speed. The longer your shutter stays open, the more light you collect and the better the signal to noise ratio is gonna get. So if you do a three to four minute exposure, your foreground's gonna look bright, more detailed, less noise, but then you have the issue of the stars trailing. So you have to take another exposure, this time with a star tracker to track the stars, and then you have a long exposure without any star trailing, and you can blend those two images together to have an image that has less noise, much better detail, much better colors. And so 
if you want to improve your astro images, knowledge is way more powerful than buying a new camera in today's digital camera market. This is why I think my book, Photographing in the Night Sky, is a bargain because you learn so much to improve the quality of your images at a price which is much cheaper than buying a new camera for thousands of pounds or thousands of dollars. And this is the reality of landscape astrophotography. Even if you had a perfect camera which didn't produce any noise, your images would still be noisy and you'd still have to use these techniques to produce good looking images without any noise. There are a few instances where upgrading your camera is obviously going to have significant improvements, especially if your camera is eight or nine or 10 years old now, or if you're switching from a smaller sensor to a bigger sensor. So from going to a micro four third sensor to a crop sensor, you'll see a good improvement. From going from a crop sensor camera to a full frame sensor camera, again, you'll see a bigger improvement. And the main metric to think about here is the size of the pixels, something called the pixel pitch. Bigger pixels are more efficient at collecting light. And there's a lot of other reasons why bigger pixels are better. So the A7S III, for example, is only 12 megapixels. So you've got big pixels on this full frame sensor. They're very efficient at collecting light. They're nice and spread out. So, uh, so thermal dissipation is a lot better. You get less thermal noise, especially when you compare that to the A7R5, which is like 60 megapixels. You've got really small pixels packed onto a full frame sensor. Those small pixels are not very efficient. They're collecting light. There's things like crosstalk where the signal from one pixel mi mixes with the pixel next to it. And again, because they're all packed so tightly together, they heat up a lot quicker than they would with the A7S. And so you end up with a lot more thermal noise. And so if you're comparing cameras with the same sensor size, the bigger the pixels, the better they'll be in low light. And for me, there's kind of like three categories in the full frame realm. There's the A7S, which is like 12 megapixels. Then you've got the 20 to 30 or maybe 40 megapixels. And then you've got the high megapixel cameras like the 50s and 60s, which are not going to be as good in low light as the other cameras. But if you're using these techniques like star trackers and long exposures, you minimize those differences again. You only really want to think about that if you're doing single exposure astrophotography, things like the Aurora Borealis, which moves very quickly and requires a quick shutter speed. Or if you're doing time lapses where you want the single exposures to have uh, less noise, that's when a camera like the A7S III comes into its own because the single exposures are very, very clean. So I hope you've learned something in this video. If you have, hit the like button and hit subscribe if you haven't already. If you're going out to enjoy the night sky anytime soon, I wish you good luck and clear skies.